Critical Thinking by Jay Tanaka. Chal 2021 Feedback by Jim Smiley. Japan faces a serious problem in the coming decades. The Japanese lifespan is increasing such that children born in Japan in 2007 have a 50% probability of living to 107 years old. Furthermore, around 49% of the working population in Japan could be replaced by artificial intelligence or robots. Jobs that will disappear are those that are formulaic to be replaced by robots and those that are information intensive to be replaced by AI. Jobs that will be needed are those which require creative and critical thinking skills and those which involve interpersonal skills. An implication of these statistics is that there needs to be a serious reassessment of the type of education in the lifespan. Currently, the typical pattern is a three-stage model that begins with education for employment and ends with retirement. MECs intend to change this three-stage model into a multi-stage model, which they call Society 5.0, to better reflect the different employment types and changed demographics. The data and aim were given by MECs. MECs are well aware of these problems and have set a target of three core academic abilities that should be mastered at high school in preparation for post-secondary learning. They are, one, a solid acquisition of knowledge and skills. Two, the power of critical thinking, judgment and self-expression. Three, an independent willingness to work with learn from diverse range of people. However, many educators have noted that even university students do not exhibit critical thinking skills. Minishima analyzed how critical thinking is taught in high school. He translates Mext's definition of critical thinking as, to go beyond a mere understanding of facts and opinions, by comparing your understanding with other facts and opinions, including your own. Analyzing and evaluating it based on your own knowledge and experience and integrating it with your existing knowledge. Note the three basic task groupings. He presents a typical example from a high school textbook. What are the advantages and disadvantages of studying abroad? Students working with such a question are likely to investigate their opinions, gather relevant facts, and then exchange these with classmates. These actions satisfy task group one. However, it is hard to see how this type of question allows task group two to be performed by students. In the experience of many post-secondary educators, most students perform task group one well but task group two is ignored. Task group three is also ignored, but for different reasons. Unless there is some way to check knowledge integration, it is assumed. However, this assumption relies on students' willingness to accept the perspectives of others. This brings us on to Jay Tanaka's presentation at JALT 2021, entitled Applied Critical Thinking, Students Exploring Social Media. The abstract stated that Tanaka will review the pedagogical features, teaching steps and caveats of this approach. My own research with students at Jincha has focused on issues in the development of advanced academic thinking in preparation for writing the Sotsaron, the graduation thesis. I locate my research within the field of epistemic cognition, but there is a significant overlap with critical thinking. So I was interested in seeing the teaching steps and caveats in Tanaka's approach. Before we look at Tanaka directly, 
we must see how critical thinking and epistemic cognition are related. Briefly, for today's purposes, we can reduce the many systems of categorizing epistemic cognition into two fundamental levels, the novice and the expert thinker. A novice thinker is characterized by didactic and reproductive beliefs where knowledge is defined by authority, is absolute, where teaching is seen as transmission. And to an expert thinker, knowledge is seen as constructed and the student must judge alternative theories on the basis of evidence. Moon's key insight is that critical thinking is only possible if the nature of knowledge construction is known, that is, only to expert thinkers. If students see knowledge as being correct and do not realize that knowledge as being the result of inquiry that is subject to inferential processes and justification, they cannot subsequently realize the fallibility of knowledge. To these novice thinkers, critical thinking can be no more than offering one's opinion on any topic. In my own research here at Jincha, my data supports Moon's assertion. In particular, my own research points to many Jincha students holding novice beliefs, even in third and fourth year. This explains difficulties in teaching critical thinking. I have attended a talk by Tanaka before and was impressed by his range and depth of understanding of critical thinking. So I was intrigued to see how he teaches it and to see what kinds of issues and caveats he discusses. I will go through Tanaka's introduction very quickly, except to note that he is very careful to do three things. One, survey the range of definitions of critical thinking. Two, provide a clear definition of critical thinking. Three, in the context of his own application. Too often presenters do not provide these steps, which leads more to confusion than anything else. Tanaka lists seven aspects or definitional strands of critical thinking from Moore, judgment, skepticism, a simple originality, sensitive readings, rationality, an active engagement with knowledge and self-reflexivity. There is no time in this presentation to expand on these strands. However, each aspect presents significant issues for teachers. Then Tanaka adds seven more themes from another source. He provides even more definitions and summaries from McPeck, Ennis, and Benesh that expand the scope and of the notion of critical thinking. The overall effect is the understanding that critical thinking is a multifaceted set of skills that are not readily summarized. Tanaka is perfectly correct in stating that teachers need a definition of critical thinking that students can understand and remember easily and that has a clear application in the coursework. Without such a grounding in students' practical activities, Critical thinking pedagogy can easily become too abstract to be functional, a trap that I may fall into too often. Next, Tanaka prioritizes Richard Paul's strong sense of critical thinking, which deals with issues of self-deception, not recognizing one's own biases. Two, contextual considerations in logic, and three, multi-categorical ethical issues. These point to a complex system of integrated meta-level considerations that I have rarely seen overtly articulated by students. The last two items rely heavily on the notion of knowledge as being constructed. So, prospective building takes on an important role in developing students' abilities. Tanaka contrasts a single perspective or monological reasoning with critical thinking's multi-logic approach. He 
he asserts that the ability to make a reasoned argument from one perspective, one logic is essential, but not sufficient for critical thinking. I agree, but I would prefer to delete the term logic because it is too easily misunderstood and misused. And that is, logic itself is not perspective building. It is an internal inquiry directed at establishing the validity of a single claim. Also, the idea that monological arguments are based in deductive reasoning is a technical error. Monological arguments rely more on contextual inferencing, which include inductive, abductive, and presumptive reasoning. But these are minor quibbles, minor quibbles. In goal setting, Tanaka rightly draws a distinction between well-structured goals and ill-structured problem solving. Without explaining these concepts directly, for example, what is not our goal to know the correct answer to understand the best way to solve problems? Briefly, a well-structured problem is one whose answer is definite and can be inferred from the given information. An ill-structured problem possesses multiple solutions and uncertainty about which concepts, rules, and principles are necessary for the solution. In other words, ill-structured problems have no fixed solution. Developing citizens who can deal with ill-structured problems is a direct goal that MEXT have addressed. And it is a goal here for us at Jinsha. Tanaka's advice here may also be applicable to much instruction in problem-based and practice-based learning, both PBL. Teachers need to be clear as to their goals and generally to avoid well-structured problems if the intention is to develop critical and creative thinkers. We now come to what I consider to be Tanaka's best slide. This sequence is beautiful. I was excited to see how Tanaka would develop it. One. Consider multiple perspectives and different logics. But again, what does logic mean here? Two, support your own ideas, but also problematize them. Three, carefully describe the contradictions and complications. A multiple perspective approach is a standardly good approach. Training students how to problematize their own ideas is an excellent strategy. As I have difficulty in aiding students to do this, I was interested to see Tanaka's method. Finally, describing contradictions and complications seems an appropriately good penultimate target for a critical thinking process in social issue understanding. We proceed now to the practical application of these three stages. Number one, multiple perspectives that go on social media. Two, Copy and paste 30 comments on a shared Google document. Three, categorize the comments. Again, he doesn't give a scheme with which to categorize the comments. Two, support and problematize your ideas. Number one, avoid shallow criticism of your own point. Two, show empathy. Try to step into the shoes of someone who would deeply disagree with you. Three, describe contradictions and complications. One, why is this topic so complicated? Two, why is there no easy solution to this problem? Three, why are people on different sides of the issue unwilling to compromise? The example provided by Tanaka centered on the Olympics. For number one, you can see some opinions in favor of hosting the Olympics and then some opinions against hosting them. For number two, support and problematize your ideas. And for number three, describe contradictions and complications. No examples were given. I would dearly have liked to have seen those. 
Note also that the examples provided are not by Tanaka students, but from an existing textbook. So the comments are presumably written by materials writers and not by actual students. Tanaka surveyed his students about this teaching approach. Briefly, student feedback indicated that the lesson was useful. By doing step one, multiple perspectives, they could expand their knowledge significantly, although they found the task quite difficult. Task two, supporting and problematizing, was also difficult, but it also helped expand students' knowledge. Task three, describing contradictions and complications, was seen to expand students' knowledge significantly and was useful, although difficult. To be honest, however, without examples, it is hard to comprehend these results. The final two points indicated that students did achieve valuable learning outcomes. One comment said that, I think that not letting students give a clear answer in such a presentation leads to a true understanding of the problem. The ill-structured nature of social problems seems to be more accessible to this student. The last comment was insightful. A student said, when discussing controversial topics, I never paid much attention to why the topic is complicated in the first place. This realization is itself a major achievement for this student. The comment continues. By confirming the complexity of the topic through consideration of why simple solutions don't work, I felt that the structure of the controversy, so to speak, becomes clear. Again, a significant result for this student. However, without seeing how these understandings were enacted in student work, their precise shape is unknown. Tanaka provides a very promising sequence for teaching critical thinking. His three steps are purposeful, clear, and develop on each other. He begins with a standard of search for multiple perspectives. This continues with an investigation, that is, problematize of one's own biases. I presume that students are also expected to problematize all perspectives that they have collected. This, however, would take a lot of class time. The target aim is for a wider appreciation of the target issue, which is operationalized by the collection of two lists, a list of the contradictions in the issue and a list of the complications in the issue. This sequence extends a typical approach that merely collects opinions and facts. Furthermore, the inclusion of self-problematizing enables the beginnings of self-reflection. However, there are many prob points that remain unclear. I will conclude by noting some of the issues that remain and by offering some suggestions for teaching. The main issue I see in this approach is that it promotes a multiplistic epistemic cognition, not a sophisticated one. This means that various perspectives are collected, which is good, but there lacks an evaluation of perspectives in the sense that certain perspectives are likely to be more productive in certain contexts than others. Without a clear context for investigation, students' sense of good or bad perspectives is likely to be judged by their own opinion not by any established reliable means of verification or justification. In other words, the old fact versus opinion mind problem mindset is continued. Problematizing one's own perspective is a useful activity. However, students need to learn methods of problematizing. Tanaka defines critical thinking in this particular context with these particular students for this particular learning outcome as the exploration of possibilities and perspectives. Yet, without 
an actual purpose for data and prospective collection. Teachers need to realize that social issues and any other ill-structured problem approaches reduce to the level of opinion A versus opinion B. Tanaka asks for an investigation into possibilities, but without a clear context, possibilities cannot be established. Now, I'm not criticizing Tanaka for this. In his context with first year students, his approach is deeper and more productive than most. However, this approach does not overcome the fact versus opinion problem, only me merely reinforces it. When later year students tackle problem solving tasks, they continue to rely on their opinions and collect facts that merely support their opinions. The main problem is that the issues we use in the classroom are based on values and models. That is, we ask students to give their values in a topic. Students cannot I'm sorry, values cannot be challenged easily. To say that person A's values are better than person B's values is wrong. To overcome this problem, I suggest that every social problem is framed within a particular theoretical framework. Initially, the framework is provided by the teacher, and in the later years, Students may purposefully select and use relevant frameworks that they have already learned. Let's take the Olympics Games theme as our example. I will give this example in a simplified manner, but teachers are encouraged to extend the approach in as deep a manner as possible. To review, here are the two opinions that supported the Olympics. Yusuke said, Yosuke said, it sounds exciting because hosting the Olympics can boast, can boost the economy. A lot of money is spent on goods and services, which will bring benefits to the host city. And Erika said, I approve fully of hosting the Olympics. It promotes friendship and peace among people from different countries. People can learn about many different cultures. Yosuke's opinion is based on economics. The main claim is that there will be a positive economic benefit to the host city. This claim may be true or it may be false. As such, it is an excellent question to begin. If Yosuke's opinion is compared with Erika's, the, question can only, the, the students can only agree or disagree. This is unproductive because it merely promotes a my opinion versus your opinion mindset. Instead, teachers can ask, how should Yusuke find out how true his claim is? Now, there are methods in economics that investigate this question. First year students, however, will not know those methods. Teachers can give sources of economic information to students. They can demonstrate a revenue in versus a revenue out spreadsheet and have students collect facts, excuse me, collect data to fill out the spreadsheet. I did a quick Google search for Tokyo Olympic cost and benefits. Around 6.9 million hits were returned. So techniques of searching and sourcing can be introduced. Teachers can introduce the concept of opportunity cost if they wish to develop the question towards a values approach. Now, I'm not an economist, so my advice on this topic is limited. However, at the more advanced level of economics, I am aware that the flow of revenue itself has implications for the financial health of a city, even if the net result is a loss. Expert economic teachers can use this example to develop students' application of such techniques. Returning to the more simplistic level, students' collection of perspectives is still possible. There are many stakeholders in the Olympic question. 
students can brainstorm who these stakeholders may be and collect relevant information about the Olympics and money from the stakeholders' perspectives. Teachers may wish to explore issues of ethical and sustainable business practices with students to frame and perhaps problematize the perspectives that students collect. To summarize my suggestions, I wish to avoid the fact versus opinion minds uh, and opinion A versus opinion B mindsets. To do so, I suggest, I'm sorry, however, remember that Moncusho itself only consider facts and opinions. To do so, I suggest that all critical thinking and any other ill-structured problem-solving approaches be framed within students' academic learning. In non-specialist teaching, for example, English as a foreign language class, the academic frameworks will be relatively simple. In the specialist classes, more advanced frameworks should be used. In this process, critical thinking teaching is intimately associated both with the context of critical thinking and with relevant techniques and methods in critical thinking. These suggestions take up a bit more time, but the benefits are far reaching. <laughs>